Operation Argus was a series of United States low-yield, high-atmosphere nuclear weapons tests and missile tests secretly conducted from the 27th of August to the 9th of September 1958 over the South Atlantic Ocean. The tests were performed by the Defense Nuclear Agency. The tests were to study the Christophilos effect, which suggested it was possible to defend against Soviet nuclear missiles by exploding a small number of nuclear bombs high over the South Pacific. The tests demonstrated that the effect did indeed occur, but also revealed that it dissipated too rapidly to be very effective. The tests were proposed by Nicholas Christophilos in an unpublished paper of what was then the Livermore branch of the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory as a means to verify the Christophilos effect, which argued that high-altitude nuclear detonations would create a radiation belt in the extreme upper regions of the Earth's atmosphere. Such radiation belts were viewed as having possible tactical use in war, including degradation of radio and radar transmissions, damage or destruction of the arming and fusing mechanisms of ICBM warheads, and endangering the crews of orbiting space vehicles that might enter the belt. Prior to Argus, hard tactique had shown disruption of radio communications from a nuclear blast, though this was not due to the creation of radiation belts. Argus was implemented rapidly after inception due to forthcoming bans on atmospheric and exoatmospheric testing in October 1958. The tests were conducted within a mere half-year of conception. Because nuclear testing during this time was bending the rules, the military borrowed International Geophysical Year equipment to cover up the nuclear tests. Two missiles, with warheads 136 to 227 kilograms to be launched within one month of each other, originating from a single site. The missiles were to be detonated at altitudes of 200 minus 1,000 miles, and also at 2,000 to 4,000 miles. For reasons of security, both names were dropped in favor of the independent name Argus. TF-88 was organized solely to conduct Operation Argus. Once Argus was completed, the task force was dissolved, and its records dispersed. USS Norton Sound was a United States Navy-guided missile ship responsible for missile launching functions. She also served as a training facility for crews involved in the testing. The X-17A missiles to be used in the test were unfamiliar to those conducting the tests. Exercises including assembly and repair of dummy missiles were conducted aboard Norton Sound. Grala would later receive the Legion of Merit for his role conducting the tests expeditiously. After this equipment was added, she sailed to the ocean around the area of the Azores to record data at the conjugate point, as the rest of Task Force 88 headed to the South Atlantic to conduct the tests. She carried an Air Force MSQ-1A radar and communication system for missile tracking. USS Neosho refueled task force ships during the operation. Two satellite launches were attempted in order to obtain data from these high-altitude tests. Explorer 4 successfully rode an Army Jupiter C missile to orbit from Cape Canaveral. There were many tracking systems used by the task force along with these satellites along with many organizations that helped track these missiles. These included the Naval Research Laboratory, the Army Signal Research and Development Laboratory, the Smithsonian Astrophysical Laboratory, the Army Map Service, the Naval Ordnance Test Station, and the Ballistic Research Laboratory along with ground tracking stations from the Aleutian Islands through the Azores from academic, industrial, and military organizations. To prepare for the launch of the Argus missiles, many tests and preparations were conducted. These tests were conducted to test equipment and procedures, and to train personnel in specialized assignments. Some of these assignments necessary for the Argus missile launchings were, stationing of ships, MSQ-1A radar tracking by the USS Neosho and the USS Tarawa, communications, positioning of Sky Camera S-2F aircraft, and area surveillance S-2F aircraft. About 1,800 kilometers southwest of Cape Town, South Africa, USS Norton Sound launched three modified X-17A missiles armed with 1.7 knots W-25 nuclear warheads into the upper atmosphere, where high-altitude nuclear explosions took place. The altitude of the tests was chosen so as to prevent personnel involved in the test from being exposed to any ionizing radiation. The task force commander and his staff had laid out a series of precautionary radiation safe measures to be followed in each stage of the operation. Even though the chance of exposure to radiation from these missiles was so minute, the safety measures were still carried out as directed by the commander by the crew of Task Force 88. The Argus explosions created artificial electron belts resulting from the beta decay of fission fragments. Such radiation belts affect radio and radar transmissions, damage or destroy arming and fusing mechanisms of intercontinental ballistic missile warheads, and endanger crews of orbiting space vehicles. It was found after running these tests that the explosions did in fact degrade the reception and transmission of radar signals, another proof that Christophilos was correct about the Christophilos effect. 
Argus proved the validity of Christophilos' theory, the establishment of an electron shell derived from neutron and beta decay of fission products and ionization of device materials in the upper atmosphere was demonstrated. The tests were first reported by Hansen Baldwin and Walter Sullivan of the New York Times on 19 March 1959, headlining it as the greatest scientific experiment ever conducted. After the completion of testing, the task force returned to the United States via Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The tests were announced the following year, but the full results and documentation of the tests were not declassified until 30 April 1982.